In my restless dreams, I see that town, Silent Hill. Hello everybody and welcome to Silent Hill 2, the magnum opus of the Silent Hill franchise and an absolute mindfuck of a game. Now, keep in mind, I am playing a PS2 version, so I'm going to go into settings real quick and change a couple things. And the reason why I'm playing the PS2 version is because there's a lot of things I prefer the PS2 version over the HD version in the HD re-release for the PS3. I'll get into it later on, but uh, first things first, we also need to change the screen position because it likes to be off to the side for some reason when you start up the game. I don't know why. But now that we got all that taken care of, let's hop right into it. Now there's two scenarios with this game. There's the main scenario and sub scenario. The sub scenario is kind of like uh, Ada from separate ways from RE4. We're going to play that later though. So let's go ahead and hit the main scenario. I want normal and riddle level hard. So let's hop right into it. Uh, James Sunderland, one of the most tragic characters in gaming. Much like with all these old survival horror games, it's tank controls. Although I don't really mind tank controls. I mean, without the amount of games I've beaten so far, I'm kind of accustomed to them. Just one of those things you get used to after playing uh, survival horror games for a while. dreams I see that town Silent Hill you promised you'd take me there again someday but you never did well I'm alone there now in our special place waiting for you name. It's ridiculous. Couldn't possibly be true. That's what I keep telling myself. A dead person can't write a letter. Mary died of that damn disease three years ago. So then, why am I looking for her? place. What could she mean? This whole town was our special place. Does she mean the park on the lake? We spent the whole day there. Just the two of us staring at the water. Could Mary really be there? Is she really alive? Waiting for me. Alrighty, so the reason why James is going to Silent Hill is because he got a letter from his dead wife, who's been dead for three years now, which would honestly raise a couple eyebrows. The things are not what they seem. But first things first, we need to stop by the car and get the map of Silent Hill. 
There we go. Because you can't leave here without it. By the way, he's got a pretty nice car. I mean, it's rusted up, but... Meh. Also, fun fact. Uh, in New Game Plus, there's actually a truck that comes right through here. And it has one of the uh, New Game Plus weapons. I also like how it says, We Come. As the L fell off. <laughs> Although, keep in mind... When it comes to Silent Hill games, they're psychological horror games. Everything in this game has a meaning behind it. And in James Sunderland's case, when it comes to like the monsters of the Silent Hill universe, they always like manifest of people's like guilt or deepest fears and desires. So with the exception of one, he is a big one. A lot of uh, James Sunderland's monsters typically manifest portions of the female anatomy and all that stuff. A lot of the monsters in this game have a lot to do with femininity. I also love James Sunderland's running animation in this game. He's got like this weird hip sideways stroll when he runs. I just find it funny. We need to make our way down here to the point where we come across the well. There it is. Hello. We got a red napkin down there, a red handkerchief. There's something in the well. I don't know what that was. What's that? Looking at this makes me feel like someone's groping around inside my skull. It gives me a weird feeling. So yeah, red handkerchiefs are like our save points in this game. So whenever you see a red handkerchief, yeah, that's a save point. Think like if I recall in Silent Hill 1, it was like these red symbols on walls and stuff. Excuse me, I... <gasps> oh, I'm, I'm sorry. I... I... No, I was it's just... okay. I didn't mean to scare you. I'm kind of lost. Lost? Yeah. I'm looking for Silent Hill. Is this the right way? Um, yeah. It's hard to see with this fog, but... There's only the one road. You can't miss it. Thanks. But... Yes? I think you'd better stay away. This... Uh... Th this town... There's something wrong with it. It's kind of hard to explain, but... Is it dangerous? Maybe. And it's not just the... Fog either. Okay, it's... I got it. I'll be careful. I'm not lying. No, I believe you. It's just, I guess I really don't care if it's dangerous or not. I'm going to town either way. But why? I'm looking for someone. Who, who, who is it? Someone. Very important to me. I'd do anything if I could be with her again. Me too. I'm looking for my mama. I, I mean my mother. It's been so long since I've seen her. I thought my father and brother were here, but I can't find them either. I I'm sorry. It's not your no, problem. I, I hope you find them. Yeah, you too. Yeah, that chick is schizophrenic as all hell. There's also another cutscene here. What is it? Oh, nothing. 
Sure is quiet here, huh? I guess. <laughs> Weirdo. All right, let's continue on. And like I said previously, I am playing the PS2 version. And I prefer the PS2 version over the HD version because there's a lot the HD, HD version of the game fucks up on. Like for one, I don't know what they were doing with the fog aspect, but they screwed that up. When it comes to Silent Hill, the fog adds a lot to the atmosphere in the game. Kind of like Resident Evil with the tight quarters and the claustrophobia. The fog, the fog gives Silent Hill its like atmospheric vibes. There's also the case of the voice act, and me personally, I prefer the original voice acting over the uh, voice acting from the HD version. Although I will give the HD version credit, you can swap back over to the original voice acting. With the exception of Silent Hill 3, I don't know why they didn't give Silent Hill 3 that option. I also like how they skip over Silent Hill 1. They always skip over the first Silent Hill game. Silent Hill 1 needs some love, people. Come on. And the reason why I'm playing this is because the remake's coming out. Although I prefer they remake the first one. Because that one also desperately needs a remake. <laughs> Though I'm still pretty excited for the remake of the second game. All right. Oh, there's a better shot of the hips. <laughs> James Sunderland's hips don't lie. We should be getting close to Silent Hill now. That camera angle will fix itself. Ugh. Not as bad as like the fixed camera angles from Resident Evil, but eh, Silent Hill's camera angles are pretty bad too. Oh, hey, Roadrunner. I guess Looney Tunes characters exist in the Silent Hill universe. Although, I would probably throw the game out the window if I encountered Mickey Mouse in Silent Hill. Or Bugs Bunny. Oh, wait, there is actually Bunny as in Silent Hill. Although, I don't think they appear until the third game. I'm going to come over here real quick because there's a first aid kit. And we need to follow this road down here. There should be an item down here. And we should also encounter our first monster down this way. I think it's called the Groveler. Yeah, blood trails. Are these marks blood? There it goes. That shadow just now. All right, what we want to do is we want to hug this wall. I'm not doing the same thing I did in the first Silent Hill game where I ran all throughout the city picking up items. I'm just going to like, uh, kind of like distribute it in a way where I pick up items along the way. Although there's going to be a couple ones I go for right off the bat, usually healing items. Now, another little key detail. Pay attention to James Sunderland's head whenever he gets close to an item. He'll actually look at the item. Good example would be down here. We continue going straight. He'll actually look off to the side like that. That lets you know there's an item nearby. Which there should be two health drinks in here, I believe. And a save point if you need it. There we go. And we need to continue on down the road. Now a couple of things that uh, Silent Hill do 2 does better than Silent Hill 1. 
Silent Hill 1 went for a more realistic approach to things because whenever Harry Mason got tired in the game, it would affect his aiming. That doesn't happen in uh, Silent Hill 2, which is kind of a pain in the ass when you're dealing with monsters in Silent Hill 1. You're trying to shoot your gun, but the bullets just fly everywhere. You don't have that problem in Silent Hill 2. That ass, though. All right. I need to figure out the swinging. There we go. I have to get used to controls in this game. Is it dead? What the hell is it? It's not human. Hmm. One sec. But I uh, up the brightness. I did. Hmm. Oh well. It's gonna be one of those playthroughs. Dark as shite, and I can barely see anything. Oh yeah. This thing broken. Better take it anyway. I might need it. So we got our ham radio. Now the radio is useful because I'll let you. Oh! I forgot about the blood trail he leaves behind after running over a body of a monster. <laughs> yeah, the radio helps us. Well, it lets us know when a monster's nearby. Whenever you're close to an enemy, it'll start going off and making that static noise. Which is quite helpful. But first things first, let me bring out the map real quick. We need to make our way to Martin Street, which is right over there. There we need to get our key. We'll also probably run to the right side and get the... Uh, yeah, see the radio going off. Just so we'll put it on the map where the drop-off cliff sides are. Because whenever you get close to a cliff, he'll actually put it on the map. Yeah, a little squiggly line right there. <laughs> we need to make a right over here. And then another right to get into Martin Street. And with it being a survival horror game, I'm going to try to actively avoid fights as much as possible. Just so I could save ammo. Oh, he looked at something. What are you looking at, James? Oh, I see. It's a health drink. We're going to continue on down here. He'll also look at enemies like he's doing now. I think there's a, yeah, a crawler underneath that truck. But we need to get the apartment gate key. A little nifty feature too. All the corpses in this game have like the same model as James Sunderland. Although I'm pretty sure that's intentional. Like given that. James Sunderland's story and stuff like that. Yeah, it kind of makes sense for the corpses to actually look like or resemble James. Since we got that. 
bring up the map again. We need to go to Happy Burger, which is down the street. Off to Happy Burger. Man, there's gonna be a lot of gravelers around here and uh or grovelers. I'm pretty sure that's the name of the enemies in this game. I mean not all the enemies, just these things. That like to spray you. Which is annoying. Although I much prefer them over the dogs and pterodactyls from the first game. First aid kit. But sadly, the dogs make their return in the fourth game. And they're just as much of a pain in the ass in that game as, uh As in the first one. We need to go down this road and look for a camper. There it is. Alright, what I need to grab in here is this. I'll wait at Bar Neely's. Whenever you pick up an item, he'll mark it on the map, which is very handy. Copied into my own map. There's another safe point in here, too. Aside from that, nothing really else. Nothing else. <laughs> now we need to head down to Bar Neely's. We're trying to spray me. I don't want your juices all over me. Go away. Another one somewhere around here too. I think it's this building. Yeah, with the uh, papers blocking the window. There was a hole here. It's gone now. Hmm. We need to come over here to the map. The map of Silent Hill with a lot of X's and O's and stuff. James will actually mark on the map. And we need to go to Wood Apartments. Now, funny enough, that's actually the map that uh, Harry Mason left in the first Silent Hill game. Because, you know, in the first game, Harry Mason left a bunch of clues throughout Silent Hill to help people out. It's just one of those small connections that connects the games. Although, the first game and the third game do it more. And Silent Hill 2 and Silent Hill 4 have, like, a lot of connections with each, each other, too. Let me go ahead and look on the map real quick, see where I'm going. Going down the wrong street. I need to turn around and go down there. Try to avoid this groveler. Nope. Oh, wait. I'm pretty sure there was a... Memory serves. There should be a med kit somewhere around here, too. Yeah, in here. There we go. Pick that up real quick and continue on. Oh, God. Fuck you. All right, where's the entrance to the apartments? Right there. There we go. Now keep in mind, every key location, there's going to be a map. So right off to the left, we're going to find the map to the apartment complex. And of course, it's going to be dark in here. Though darkness is, in, it is intentional. Can't really do nothing about it. 
We need to go up to the first floor right here. Or technically the second floor. Now, problem is, James can't actually use the map in the dark, so we need to find the flashlight, which I need to find the door. It should be along this wall somewhere. I can see the bloody door. Maybe it's on this side. Definitely an enemy somewhere around here too. Please be the right room. It is. All right, there's our flashlight. That'll help out a lot. And a new enemy, a mannequin. Which is basically harmless. I was like how we still have our executions. Now we can actually look on the map to see where we're going. And we have a light source. Thank God. that I need to go back out into the main hall area we need to go upstairs I just ran past the groveler oh that's a mannequin I could easily take you on Oh, how do I do executions? Execute. There we go. Thank you. Oh, I somehow turned off the light. There we go. Oh! Stop it. Wrong button. All right, where's the stairwell? Here, this door right here, the door in the back. Nope, we're back in this room. Oh, great. I need to go up to the third floor. That's what I'm after. Or not this one. Hmm. Or not, it's further down the hallway. It's right there. So we gotta get past the uh, three rooms. There's one. Two. There it is. All right, thank God. There's a reason why we're going up here. I love the atmospheric music that's playing now. Okay. Don't want to grab that f yet. Then we're going to come down here. Yeah, get used to seeing the map a lot. It's 301, that's the one we want. Reason why is because there's a gun in the shopping cart. 
which is essentially the developers taking a jab at American culture. For how easy it is to buy a gun in the United States, although it's not really that easy. Background checks are a bitch. Believe me. I don't think there's anything in here. Yeah, it's locked. So any rooms that are locked, James Sunderland will actually put in his journal. But we need to go. There's a key on the ground on the other side of the bars. If I stretch my arm out, Jess might be able to reach it. Or use the plank of wood you've been carrying the whole time. Logic. Damn it. Bastard kid. Alright, so now we're going to go down to the first floor. Alright. Uh, oh yeah, I forgot to pick up the health drink here, too. Love all the beer bottles down here, too. Okay, I'm going to end the episode here, ladies and gentlemen. I think, like, in the next episode, we're going to finish up the apartments and maybe encounter that special somebody who's an icon of the Silent Hill franchise. But until then, if you guys enjoyed the video so far, like and subscribe, and as always, have a good day.